this is a pedigree diagram, okay? And below shows the inheritance of hemophilia in a family. Okay, now hemophilia is a, you must know this, a sex-linked disease. Okay, it's sex-linked. So it is carried on the X chromosome of the female. Why? Because females are XX and males are XY. And the problem is that when the female carries, let's get another color here, when she carries things here, there is no compensating part here in the male, which means that the poor male ends up with it. So if the male has an X that carries whatever the chromosome would have been, uh, would, that would have been uh, um, sort of cancelled out on this part of, it, of the Y, then unfortunately the male will end up with that disease, with that uh, um, mutation, etc., etc. If it is sex linked, it's carried on the X chromosome. Remember, we have 22 pairs of of um, autosomes. Autosomes are body are body chromosomes. Okay, they're for everything else. And then we have two chromosomes that are your gonosomes. Gonosomes are your sex chromosomes. So in a female XX and a male XY. Okay, so. The pedigree diagram, let me choose yellow, the pedigree diagram shows the inheritance of hemophilia, which is a sex-linked uh, um, disease, in a family. The allele causing, now remember allele, alleles, if you've got your chromosomes, there is the maternal chromosome, and here is the paternal chromosome, because of your homologous chromosomes in your body. For you, any person, you've got one from the male, and you've got you got one that you inherit, man. You got one that you inherited from your dad, and you got one that you inherited from your mom. Okay, everything looks like that. In girls, the X chromosome would be from dad, and the uh, and the X chromosome would be from mom, and that would make a girl. In a in a boy, the X would be from the mom, and the Y would be from the dad. Okay, so that's why the male determines the sex of a child. All right, now, it's represented by X. Oh, hang on, I want to tell you about alleles. So when you have your alleles, let's say for this, in this case, uh, um, or let's take eye color, the, the eye color allele will be on the male chromosome and it will be in exactly the same locus on the female chromosome. All right, those two genes well then, that makes an allele, and that makes an allele. So that is your allele pair. All right. So those are your alleles. So when it says the normal allele is represented by that, and the allele that causes is represented by this. And we know that the general rule is if it is a capital letter, then it is dominant. And if it is a little lowercase letter, then it is r. Dominant. I'm not going to be able to fit it in. All right. Now, first thing you do, and this goes quickly when you know how to do it. The first thing you, before you even look at the questions, don't, don't even look at the questions. You read the top part of the question so you can figure out what is dominant and what is recessive and you figure out what information they're giving you. You should know, and like I've told you now, that hemophilia is a sex-linked disease, okay? So the same with color blindness. Um, would, okay, it's not a disease, but it would be a sex-linked uh, uh, um, inheritance, okay? Because of males, females, color blindness is mainly a male thing, not a female thing, okay? But here we go with hemophilia. We're now going to look, it says, okay, um, that cause hemophilia and a normal allele is XH. So this male is going to be X, um, X capital H, Y, because he's normal. 
And this female, hmm, this is the problem, she can be X capital H, X capital H, so homozygous dominant, or she can be heterozygous and still look normal. All right, because that normal allele is dominant and the recessive allele is, well, clearly recessive, it's weaker. Now, for the hemophiliac male, this is easy. He is going to have that little h. He only needs one little h because he hasn't got an, a, a, an x on this side. Okay? Then, the hemophiliac female, in order to have this, uh, uh, um, to have hemophilia, okay, she must have two recessive alleles. See? Recessive, recessive. Dominant, dominant. And there's your heterozygous, and in this case, the dominant allele is going to mask the recessive. Okay? So, dominant will mask the recessive allele. This one masks that one. Okay. Now, first thing you do is you work backwards. So, this is the first generation. This is the second generation. It's the second row. And this is the third generation. It's the third row. All right? We go up. So, you always work backwards backwards when you see a pedigree diagram because the children and their traits will tell you what the parents are. Okay, but so you can look at a parent and the parent looks, in this case, normal um, or the parent looks, has, has black hair but the parent could be heterozygous black or homozygous black or in this case, the parent could look normal if it's a female but they're carrying that recessive allele. So we work backwards. It's called a back cross. So first thing we do is we mark all of the ones that we know. We know that these are what they are. So there's X, capital H. Uh, uh, man, Kathy, wow. X, cap, uh, uh, lowercase h, and a y. And this is an X, lowercase k, and a y. Right, and this male here is going to be X, little h, and a y, and X, little h, and a y. This little girl here is definitely going to be X, little h, X, little h. So we know those definitely. The next thing we're going to try and work out is which parents, uh, which females are heterozygous. Right, because we can't tell the difference here. Whether, which females, because they look normal, their phenotype is normal, what is in their genes? The males, we know, the males are all X capital HY because if they had a lowercase h, they would be shaded and they are not. So X um, capital HY and X capital HY. All right. Now we've got to figure, uh, oh, and this one here is X capital H, Y. So what do we need? We need to find out what two and four, and these two are going to be very difficult to figure out. Why? Because we are not going to know what they are. It's going to be difficult. So let's see. Here, this, this male is X capital H, Y. So if four and five produce child eight and nine, but they also produce the others. We know that if they're producing child eight and nine, the mother must be carrying the recessive allele. Okay. And we know she doesn't have two recessive alleles because then she would be shaded. So the mother must be heterozygous. Okay. Okay. Now, if we look here, we have to figure out what one and two are, because, or one we know, but two, what is two? Is two homozygous or heterozygous? So, easy. One and two produce five, uh, I mean six and seven. So, if they're going to produce six and seven, it means that this mom must be carrying the recessive allele. Okay. This is a problem, guys and girls. OK, 
Okay. So these children here got the X with the allele from mom, and they got the Y from dad, and the same here. They got that from mom and that from dad. Okay, now we know what's going on on our sheet. Now we can look at the questions. Okay, so determine the phenotype. Phenotype is what you physically see or what is physically presented and visible. So for four, what is the phenotype of four? Four is a normal female. Okay, that, that is her phenotype. She's a normal female. All right, now, next one. The genotype, which is what is in the genes of individual two. So where's individual two? Here. What is this here? It is, what, and how do we know she carries that, that recessive allele? Because one and two produce six and seven. And six and seven can only get that recessive allele from mommy. All right, so genotype is going to be X capital H and X little h. You always put the capital in front of the lowercase, so the dominant in front of the recessive. Okay, then explain why females have a smaller chance of suffering from hemophilia. Hmm. Okay, well, it's really not hard because hemophilia... Um, is sex linked, okay, or is a sex linked disease, all right, and it's not really a disease, or is it, I suppose, okay, we're going to leave it as a disease. Hemophilia is a sex linked disease um, that is caused by a recessive allele, okay? And I'm going to underline recessive so that you remember that it's a recessive allele, okay? Carried, and this is very important, on the X chromosome. Very important. It's carried, it's recessive and it's carried on the X chromosome. Okay, now females have two X chromosomes while males only have one X chromosome. Okay. Females must inherit two copies. Or it's not copies, let's do this. Two alleles um, for the recessive trait um, for it to be visible visible yo okay trait for it to be visible if they have one um, dominant Allele, it will mask the recessive one. Okay, so what's important? Hemophilia is sex linked and it's caused by a recessive allele that's carried on the X chromosome. Females have two X chromosomes while males only have one. Females must inherit two 
recessive alleles for the trait to be visible. If they only have one recessive allele, then the other one must be dominant, and the dominant will dominate over the recessive and mask it, so you won't see that. The woman will then carry, but she will not have. Right, as simple as that. That's the whole story about something that is sex-linked. Okay, if it's sex-linked, it's carried on the X chromosomes. A dominant will always dominate over a recessive allele. So for the female to have it, she must have two recessive alleles. You see, recessive, recessive. And males, well, guess what? They are either are okay and normal with a dominant allele, or they have the recessive allele. They don't have a dominant and a recessive that can, that can mask each other.